Hello guys and welcome to another era of chaos video guys today we are talking about the emblems or in other words which emblems are better what are the stats of the emblems and how you can possibly obtain and cast emblems first of all let's start with the shop you can see that there are two rows uh, on the first column of each row you always have a stone this is a casting stone but we are going to get to that later what is important to remember is that you shouldn't be buying emblems using diamonds unless uh, you really require one last emblem and you are, let's say, one day away from uh, Battle of the Gods or Crosser or Battle of the Gods or something like this. If this is not the case, then uh, you shouldn't be buying emblems using uh, gems like at all. And the only exception to the rule is, as I mentioned before, if you uh, have something very, very important in front of you and if the emblem is discounted with at least 20%, you should never buy emblem for 2000 gems, ever. And when it comes to the emblems themselves, each emblem has stats. The first set of stats will always give you either HP amplification or attack amplification or holy emblem attack, holy emblem defense. Now, if you are giving this emblem to an offensive character, then you should be after holy emblem attack. This is one of the most important stats. Then uh, it comes attack amplification. Of course, HP amplification and holy emblem defense are not really the greatest choice uh, for um, an offensive character, but after all, once you uh, are purchasing the emblem, you cannot choose its stats, they come random. And another thing that you should be careful about is the second set of stats. In my case, I have magic resistance, attack speed and attack. Now, to be honest, the Grand Elf don't really require magic resistance, but it is what it is. I cannot change it. Once again, I can control this if I start to cast the emblem. And once again, if you want to give this uh, emblem to an offensive unit, you should be after stats such as uh, critical damage, attack speed, attack. Uh, and unit damage. But once again, you cannot choose the stats once you're purchasing the emblem, they come random. Unless you get to be very, very lucky in the event Lucky Snatch, and if you get two of those uh, specific currency that you can obtain only uh, once your luck gets to 100 in Lucky Snatch, then you can actually purchase a perfect emblem. This perfect emblem has the best stats for uh, offensive character or defensive character depending on the emblem you are purchasing. If you're not getting perfect emblem, then you have to, uh, you know, try to get the best out of the random stats that you are given. And you can control that by casting, but we are going to get to that later. Also, another thing that it is important to remember is that each emblem also has a certain uh, additional stats or let's say effects that can be unlocked if you have two emblems of the same type and four emblems of the same type. In the, in the case of Path of an Assassin, if you collect two of those, you have Holy Emblem Attack plus 20 in addition and HP plus 10%. Uh, and if you select four of those in the same character, you have uh, increased penetration by 240 and additional 600 critical hit at the start of the battle for 30 seconds. And if you get to have six of them, you're going to unlock uh, the last effect of the emblem which gives additional emblem attack 55 and additional 20% to health. And now let's get to casting. The game gives you the opportunity to cast emblems or in other words to increase their stats. Now the first thing first, in the beginning uh, you can cast each emblem by having the same emblem, by the way it has to be purple if you want to cast purple, it has to be uh, orange if you want to cast orange, then all you need to have into consideration is that each emblem requires also specific stone to cast. You require five stones to cast an orange and less, I believe three if you want to cast a purple emblem. I am not convinced that uh, it is worth casting any other emblem which is below purple. Now if you cast it once, you are going to get an uh, increase of the first two stats of the emblem but you're not going to get increase of the second two stats of the emblem. The effects on the second, the fourth and sixth uh, set of the emblem will never change. And uh, the only way, the only time when you can actually change uh, the second set of um, stats, in this case attacking critical damage, will happen at level 3, 6 and 9. And of course, the higher the level gets, the more stones and uh, similar um, Emblems it is required in order to uh, get 
on the next level. And another thing, you have to remember that you can reverse the process always. For example, we have casted an emblem right now, it is plus one, but let's say that we don't want to pursue this emblem because it doesn't have good stats. Currently we have another emblem that gives HP, unit damage and attack, and what we want to do is we want to cast the already plus one to this one. So in other words, we want to keep the new emblem for the future. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, just cast the new one with the already fused plus one emblem and we are going to achieve the same effect. However, in the process, we are keeping the stats of our new better emblem. Another thing that is good to consider is that not all characters can equip all um, emblems on the top two slots. Uh, on the other slots, every character can equip any emblem. So in other words, any character can have up to plus four of the effect of the emblem, but uh, any character cannot have the plus six effect on the emblem. When I say plus six, I mean a set of six. I'm not uh, meaning uh, any uh, casting or something. So this is important to remember. Not every character can equip any emblem on the first, on the top two spots. And more or less this is it when it comes to how emblems work. Now let's focus on overly the best emblems in the game. Uh, now it all depends on the character and your strategy but I can definitely say that for offensive characters, almost all offensive characters, the best emblem in the game currently is part of an assassin. It simply makes huge difference. You can just buy one orange set and test it. It can improve uh, your conflict plane. If you are stuck somewhere it will improve your dragon invasion. It will improve every aspect of your game. So this is emblem uh, is a must for example for devil, uh, for naga and so on and so on. I'm currently using it even on my giant and it is pretty pretty overpowered. Another emblem that is worth considering of course uh, is um, legal principles, successor legal principles, which is in my opinion the best emblem uh, for almost any defensive unit uh, currently because it increases your defense, it decreases your hit points and on top of that increases your tenacity which makes it probably the best counter we currently have against the path of an assassin. And you can see almost all of my tanks has it. Another interesting emblem is Everlasting Secret, reason being this emblem fits almost any supportive character. I'm not saying it's the best, for certain support characters other emblems can work better but in a general case a very very useful emblem that is suitable for any support. And another very good emblem is Darkness Enlightenment. Uh, this is type of emblem that uh, can be used in order to let's say enhance the performance of your main damage dealer. In my case I want to enhance the performance of my giant, thus I'm giving Darkness Enlightenment to Naga so that she can lower actually the uh, damage reduction of uh, the enemy tank, hence the Naga uh, can help the giant deal more and more damage in the process. Another interesting emblem is this one, now I use it very successfully in my gem formation because if you're running gem more or less you need to have only rampart units and uh, this is the reason why this emblem works pretty good there. Gear of Time, very useful emblem. I will probably uh, give Gear of Time a full a set to my Iron Golem, I just I didn't have the opportunity to do it yet, but I'm planning on doing it in the future. Very useful emblem, especially if you have a lot of healing, which is the case in an Astral Formation, so this will come in handy. Uh, Stone Key to the Gates, another useful emblem if you have a lot of bleeding targets. Uh, if you're running Rampart, Gold Dragon, this is probably the best emblem for the Gold Dragon. And uh, another useful emblem is the Forgotten Autonom. I really am not trying to butcher the name, but <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce this. Now, another good emblem if you're running a lot of units in the same faction. I tested multiple options on the Pegasus and with this emblem the Pegasus is dealing the most damage. Uh, it kind of even out damages Poa in this particular case. When I say Poa I mean part of an assassin. And of course I forgot uh, one emblem which is uh, probably the second best emblem for supportive units. If the supportive units in this case is the Pit Fiend on the Pit Lord because she mainly relies on her heal and her heal is her first skill, the ultimate, and this uh, emblem increases the ultimate skills of uh, your deployed units with four levels, and that's really, really great. Okay guys, so this is going to be all for me for today, I really hope you found this useful, see you next time. Take care and stay safe.